Cue the music. Let's go. I'm your boy, Ro, managing editor for the new OBB legend and OG member of the Orange Bowl Boys, and welcome to another edition of Student of the Game, one in which you're probably going to want to bring some Tums. And <laughs> it didn't take long for your Miami Hurricane offense. The first play of the game, quarterback Tyler Van Dyke throws an interception. And here we go. He's going to look into the boundary stairs, a little bit of a pause, throw, and pick. Yes, you got to put the onus and responsibility squarely on the quarterback's shoulders. But I want to back this up because I'm not too thrilled about the play call. Mind you, this is the first play of the game. This is part of your scripted series. It is a simple, mirrored concept. And what does that mean? These two wide receivers are doing the same thing as these two wide receivers. And personally, mirrored concepts, well, you could have a defensive coverage that blankets the whole thing. In this case, a simple cover two. And what you'll notice at the top of the screen, when this corner in his cover two variety, he's responsible for the flat, okay? He's in a prime position as the cornerback one into the boundary to not only take away the wide receiver one's route, but he definitely takes away wide receiver two, which happens to be tight end Will Mallory. So, Two outs into the boundary. That's what you're asking your quarterback to do. Yes, to the field side, we had a little bit more cushion. Maybe our eyes can direct us there. So what can we do? Well, in the future, simple concepts, some choice routes. If you notice this cover two, you got to know what your worst enemy is. That's going to put a lot of defenders in your way as a quarterback. Just imagine with me right here. What happens if we go choice and just run this down the rail? Well, now you get this cornerback out of the way. And he's not where he was with the ball in his hands. All right, buckle up, Canes fans. We're off and running. Now, this isn't going to be a long clip. This is the second offensive play of the game. This is just one of those times where you got to tip your cap to the defensive end. Because watch what he does. When he chips on Will Mallory right there, he sucks in. Your right tackle's going in as a pass blocker, so now... You know, there's some space. If he's not chipping, there's no space. He can be aggressive. He can get his hands on it. So now he steps back outside, tips the ball up in the air, pick six. Regardless of what you want to say there in terms of the quarterback, it was an open wide receiver. Intended target was Arroyo. That's just one of those fluky things about football. One of the consistent messages you're going to hear on this particular student of the game video is just the University of Miami Hurricanes' inability to handle the Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders' pressure looks. And it wasn't just on passing plays, but rushing plays as well. University of Miami only had 60 yards rushing, and it was plays like this. When you commit to taking the run away, count them in the box. Currently, we have eight people condensed Eight-man box, single high safety, two corners. They're one-on-one. -on -one. Now, this is what happens, and this is where the breakdown emerges. You have a linebacker initially bluffing into the B-gap. There's that B-gap bubble, A, B, right? He bluffs, and then he's going to swing around, and that confused the University of Miami Hurricane offensive line. When your right guard pinches in, well, now your right tackle, he's in a conundrum. Defensive end goes in, <laughs> linebacker comes out, and swallowed up for a tackle for a loss. That's some of the communication that you need to get ironed out. Once again, play was doomed for failure. On to the Now, this is going to be a great interception by the free safety here, Cam Kinchins. Obviously, Middle Tennessee, they're going to go ahead. Pump fake. He's going to go ahead and attach to the two wide receiver. Undercut this route. Great job. He's shown remarkable range. This isn't his first interception on the season. But the University of Miami Hurricanes got lucky. Because at the pump fake, yeah, that was a touchdown. Quarterback missed it. He's turning his head back, too. <laughs> He knows it. He didn't miss many later on, though. 
So this is going to be a post-snap RPO, one attached to a slant, and it keeps the defense honest, something to consider moving forward. Let's see the Middle Tennessee State defense, shall we? Pre-snap, it looks like two safeties over the top. However, there's going to be a rotation. So pre-snap, they're going to start to roll over. Now it's going to be single high, looks to be cover three with somebody in match coverage over the number two. Okay, now this is what keeps teams honest because Tyler Van Dyke is staring at this window. Oh, it's a run blitz. They're selling out for it, and that's when he decides to pull, pop, first down. That was a successful play design, something that keeps teams honest, and especially in the future when additional teams try to sell out to take your runaway. Pressure breaks pipes. And Middle Tennessee State on this third and five? Well, they're bringing the pressure. Count them along the line of scrimmage. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the back end, five. The Dolphins have popularized this defense. This is cover zero. No safety. Everybody in man coverage. Now, here's where the breakdown happens between quarterback Tyler Van Dyke, the offensive line, and the offensive coordinator, Who's allowing this to happen? Okay, so as a quarterback, I have only five offensive linemen. I have six at the line of scrimmage. I have to assume that all six come, which is okay. That means I am accounting for one of the guys. I know that I have to get the ball out quick. I know that one of these guys is going to come in on a free release, and I have to account for him. No big deal. But here's the breakdown. When the offensive line use what's known as slide protection, they're sliding to the right. The quarterback needs to know that because watch the slide. There they go. See them all kick to the right? Well, who's coming free? Well, was that right defensive end? And where are you trying to throw the ball? Well, you're trying to throw the ball, so you're not necessarily accounting for that man. Need to do a better job in the future knowing what the line protection call is, and knowing where your intended target is. Maybe you come down here to the bottom of the screen where there's a little bit more cushion towards the slide call, but when you throw away from the slide call, not good. Now for all your Miami Hurricanes woes on the offensive side of the ball, let's be honest, the defense simply wasn't going to allow you to get back into the ball game because of big plays given up like this. Middle Tennessee State is in an empty look. Pre-snap, Cam Kitchens is rotating over the top. This is going to be zone coverage for your Miami Hurricanes, and it appears to be a cover three shell. And this is what I mean by that. You see DJ Ivy on the top of his screen, the way he's going down the rail, he's going to take this third. Cam Kitchens is in the middle, and you're assuming that Tyreek Stevenson is going to have this rail. But something happens, right? A miscommunication happens, and there's some calls that could be made between the nickel cornerback to Corey Couch and the number one corner out here, Tyreek Stevenson. They can make a call saying, hey, listen, I'll go ahead and take flat. You take the vertical. It's not something as simple as, okay, you know what? Your guy's over here. Your guy's over here. Because this is what confused the Miami Hurricane defense on this side. When you just had a receiver just stand here in the flats – there was debate and deliberation who was going to take him. But you didn't take the number two vertical, and that goes for six. Just can't have that communication breakdown. Prior to the play, they're trying to actually talk about it. They're pointing, they're talking, hey, look, you out there. Who knows where the communication breakdown was, but that's just too simple. Too simple of a breakdown. See, now I find this clip interesting. University of Miami inside the red zone. Red zone woes are continuing. You just went check with me because you're trying to get a play that you want. Now, against this look, here's what you're trying to run. You're trying to run a corner, an in, and kind of like a, a whip it route or Z out. Okay? Inside move, sell it, get back to the backside. Now, assume with me, if this is the coverage that you had, this play – would have worked, but they check on top of your check, and look what they do with this defensive end. They go ahead, 
They slide him back out. So now that three-on-three advantage became a four-on-three disadvantage. You're in a max protect look here. You're keeping the tight end and the running back in to pass protect. And they only bring four. So you got the advantage there. And look who ends up influencing this play. Right? So imagine he's not here. If he's not here, now you're leveraging a two-for-one Tyler might go ahead and hit this corner out to Brinson. He doesn't. You go out there, play swallow it up. You lost the numbers. You went check with me. But when they checked on top of your check, advantage them. So the ball's going to fall incomplete on this third and 11, and the Boo Birds are going to come out because this looks like an errant pass strictly on the shoulders of Tyler Van Dyke. But the game of football, it has this intrinsic value. And that is 11 on 11, but everybody has to do their job correctly because if somebody doesn't, it influences the play in its entirety. And that's what happens here because University of Miami, they are getting the message. You're starting to see a little bit more Max Protect looks. Middle Tennessee is bringing the pressure. Well, Mallory stays in the block. And Thad Franklin, well, he tries to block, but gets a little too far out in front loses his balance, and this is going to have to influence Tyler because this is what he's throwing around, right? Play was there. That was open. Once again, let's watch. One guy missed the block. One breakdown. That was a first down. So on the last clip, I said you couldn't necessarily blame Tyler Van Dyke for the errant throw when there was a breakdown in pass protection. On this one, yep, can't have any excuses. On the rare instance where your offensive coordinator is giving you gifts inside the red zone this year, you have to take it, and we don't. Natural pick play at the top of the screen. I like Michael Redding's ability to kind of like end the play design, I'm going to be honest, to delay it and then get out into the flats. So let's watch him. Here he goes. Delays. Now, there's the natural pick play. Wide receiver one is getting in between DB2 and wide receiver two. And you just miss it. (laughs) That was as easy of a touchdown as you're going to have. And when things aren't going your way, this one just seems like you just aimed it. Ah. So this is a play when MTSU is just being a little bit more physical than you are. Now, it's going to go in as a completion, but watch some of the calamity in its parts. Okay, where they're being more physical. Frank Latson's coming into the formation in motion. Pay attention to the DB. He's going to go ahead and jam him. Now, that's where Tyler Van Dyke is looking first. That jam doesn't happen. This was open first play of the game. The interception happened towards the boundary side. So they're trying to get this play. So a little bit more physical, get the wide receiver out of his route, throw off the timing, obviously Tyler's going to look away. Now you want to talk about being more physical? There's about how many yards here? Five yards? Watch the center. Pushed right back into Tyler. That was actually a great job by the quarterback with mess in his face to go ahead and still deliver the ball to a second, potentially third receiving option when your center (laughs) is in your lap. Whether we liked it or not, the University of Miami Hurricanes are headed into the bye week with a quarterback controversy on its hands. And towards the back end of Tyler Van Dyke's start, we're going to show back-to-back-to-back clips that probably influenced Mario Cristobal's decision to go ahead and pull Tyler from this game. First, second and eight, two-by-one look. Tyler's going to go ahead and try to hit the one-on-one stutter and go with Frank Latson here at the bottom of the screen. There's the stutter, there's the go. However, he's missing a wide-open Romello Brinson coming across the field. And when you throw this ball past your intended target, that's got to be one of the looks that Mario Cristobal is considering. Look number two, well, two-by-two look. Now, something I do want to pay attention on this third and eight, this is going to be match coverage. They're playing zone on the back end. However, when you have this linebacker attached to the two and run right out here, I have concerns there because (laughs) that's a unique coverage. Typically, you don't want defenders this close together on this side of the field. But he's in man coverage. He's in zone coverage. 
Now, he's going to jump up. He's in a position that maybe he shields Michael Redding's view. However, the throw, we got to keep the wide receiver up on his feet. The throw was behind Michael Redding. Sure, he still should have caught that ball. Was it a perfectly thrown ball? No. And then finally, and this is the last time we see Tyler on the field on this third and 13, if you go ahead and make the decision to throw now, even a little bit before I freeze the frame, Keyshawn's wide open. He holds on to the ball and sack. Enter Jake Garcia. Again, your defense simply wasn't going to allow you to get back into this game. Two safeties over the top. I just want you to go ahead and look at this. When a quarterback's deciding to throw the ball, well, Cam is taking the in-breaking route, and instead of staying over the top, could he have been in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the back end? Sure, but then again, I think we took a little bit too much of the bait going with the in-driving route. Here we go. Safety crashes. Quarterbacks decided to go ahead and throw the ball. He's just guessing wrong. Guessing wrong here. Runs out of the play. Leaves the freshman on an island. You were only down 14 points, too. Sad. And here Jake Garcia is. He's now in the contest, first and 10. University of Miami is going to attempt a sluggo with Keyshawn Smith at the bottom of the field. Basically a slant or in-breaking route and go. Now, in the future, a lot of cushion. University of Miami might consider just taking the choice route and just sitting. I know you're going for a big pop play. You're down 31 to 10. So we're going to watch pump fake after the fact in time. Quick release there. Right in the bread basket. <laughs> Should have scored. Didn't score. Oh, my goodness. Good throw, though. Okay, inside the red zone, the red zone woes continue, 31 to 17. And you got to take some inventory because when you see a DB, right, out here, number two, in the first instinct he's going to do is uh, he's really aggressively taking away the flat, right? He is. He's taking away Jake Garcia's intended target, target number one. And when you've run this flood concept at nauseum this game, high-low reads, just asking your quarterback to read high-low, where do you want Jake Garcia to go with this ball? It's completely covered. So he's got to swing across his body, try to make a play happen, questionable pass interference call. If you want my opinion, University of Miami Hurricanes, get lucky. Now, fast forward after you know a couple failed run attempts, again, fourth and goal. This is the play call that you dial up. You have one running back, two tight ends. We call that the 12 set. Now, when they've been notoriously bringing pressure, again, what do you want Jake Garcia to do? Because when they come downhill fast and you're asking essentially your right tackle to block in, that's what he does. This guy's unblocked. This guy's unblocked. Instead of having the running back just maybe, you know, hold his area after the play fake because you sold it and maybe block somebody. No, he runs out of the way. You have two defenders in Jake's face. So two on one there. <laughs> you actually have two on one defender here, but he doesn't have the time. He has to get rid of the ball quick. And that play falls to the turf. Need a little bit better there inside the red zone on back-to-back -back plays because they just beat you to the punch. So this is going to be the last clip of the evening. Again, it's a 14-point game. 31-17. <laughs> Akeem Mesador, ready? That's hole number one. He's grabbing his shoulder pad. Now watch him again yank the shoulder pad down, that should have been a safety, right? It should have been. Should have, could have, would have. It just doesn't erase the fact you just – defense, offense, this was bad. I'm your boy, Ro, managing editor for the new OBB legend. This was a full-length version for everyone this week, but come check us out at the OBB legend. I'm going to have a legend exclusive for legendary members, basically giving my thoughts in an X's and row format this week for you guys. As always, stay dangerous, my friends. Bang.